Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 14 of Bumbling Through Birthright. I'm not even trying with the hands anymore, that is too many numbers to count. This is the series where I recap my friends and mine adventure through Birthright, where we attempt to not cause terrible things to happen in like the highlands and kind of all the surrounding areas. It sometimes works. It usually doesn't. If you are new, make sure that you check out the playlist so you can get caught up to where we are. But other than that, let's just get on into the recap. So at the end of the last session, we left off at this place called Drysenby, uh, because we were hurting just, just, just a little bit from fighting, not the Ice Jotun, but the Winter Wolves. Whose idea was that, Yawn? Whose idea was that? So we had to go to this village to heal and just kind of have a nice long rest. And while we were there, it turns out that it is the time when they do their annual mudding competition. So all of Stjordvik is surrounded with a wall, and in this particular area, that wall is made up of like sticks and mud and rocks and all that stuff. And so every year they have a competition, teams enter and they see who can repair the wall best, I guess. So we decided to enter. Of course, why wouldn't we? What else are we gonna do? So there were five teams total. There were us, there were some nomads, there were the druids, there were the spears of Eric who are from Lofkritik, and then there was a local team. Local team I believe won last year and it was like the first year they had won for a very long time. So they wanted to keep that streak alive. And then we came in and we're like, we've never built a wall before. We have the queen, what are, what are we gonna do? But it actually went better than I think everyone was expecting and we came in second. The nomads took over the win streak, but you know what? That's totally fine. I will take a silver medal any day. Once the competition is over and we're all healed up, it's time to go back to Holling Holman because we've been away for quite a while and spring is starting to set in. So away we go, it's a three day adventure, nothing happens on the way there. But when we get to the city, there's some dwarf that is selling healing potions for 40 gold pieces. Now, Roz sells his healing potions for like 60 to 70 gold pieces because a very undersaturated market, they are a great commodity to have. Now, everybody can get this. It's a little ridiculous. And this is also the dwarf that accused Roz of stealing his potions. So. Roz does the only smart thing and buys a potion to kind of examine it and see if it's the same potion or what's going on there. And it turns out they're very similar except Roz uses snake venom in his potions and the dwarf uses spider venom. Gross. Ew. Gross. Spiders. Anyway, <laughs> Roz is busy doing that. Meanwhile, Jan goes off to Olaf's armaments because he's got this gun that he got from Olak the dragon and he's like, can you build more of these because that would be a cool thing to have. And Olaf assures him that he can probably get it done, but it might take him a while and Jan says, you know what, that's cool, just keep it on the DL. I don't want anyone else to know about this. Once we deal with all the things in Hollingholmen proper, we decide to go up to Ravenroost Castle because it has been a while since we've been there. And as we're headed up there, Rainier's dad is there and his dad is like, I I'm coming up to the castle, I'm gonna talk to the queen about something, but I think it's in your greatest interests. And we're all kind of like, what? what? What's going on here? So we go up to the castle and shock and awe, there are petitioners. The first one is Swarda, and if you remember from like one of the first sessions, Swarda's keep got taken and we had to go take that back. And he is there to talk to the queen. He's about 40. The queen's about 18. I think you know where this is going. He is asking for her hand in marriage and says that he will offer his keep to her and that it has been repaired since it got destroyed. <laughs> I laughed so hard, <laughs> especially because the queen is played by a man. <laughs> the queen's kind of like, oh, okay, thanks, okay, bye. And then Bran shows up and Bran is one of the free men and he is also there to ask for her hand in marriage. It just keeps getting better. He's a lot closer in age to Brindis because Brindis is about 18, maybe 19, and Brand is like 25, 26. It's not terrible. And he's got a large farmstead to offer. By this point, Rainier kind of has figured out what his dad's there for, Chief Kilner. 
he he comes up and he offers his son's hand in marriage like listen you already travel with her you travel together you know it would unite the queen with the nomads it's it's perfect and Rainier is just horribly embarrassed he's like dad stop leave me alone um so after that point petitioners kind of get called off for the rest of the day because Brindis is like omg what am I supposed to do here but you can bet that there's going to be more people asking for her hand in marriage soon. <laughs> so we decide to take a break from the castle and we head into town and on our way there this young kid comes up and he's freaking out and he's like oh my god these rust monsters got into my dad's blacksmith shop he they're eating everything blah 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 and now we have been swindled so many times before so <laughs> We don't trust a young kid and an old man. We just don't. Especially because the guy's like, it didn't make sense. He was like, there were rust monsters and the only way to get them away from me was to throw stuff into my shop so they could go in there and eat it. And we're like, why would you do something that stupid? Like, why don't you just close the door behind you and let them go on? So as happens every time we think we're being swindled, we can never make good insight checks. And so we're always like, well, I guess I believe them. But we're not like 100% sure that they're not trying to swindle us. So Valkyrie stays outside with all our stuff because obviously we can't bring in like our weapons. They'll get eaten and all that stuff. So she stays out to guard it just in case. Well, as soon as we all go in, the door gets locked behind us because yes, it is yet another swindling. They decide that, you know, the two of them can probably take Val out. And so she has to start shooting at them. She ends up like killing this little boy who's like, well, I mean, he's probably like 14. Well, not killing him, seriously injuring him. And then the other one panics, grabs the stuff and runs off. Fortunately, Val did have a healing potion on her. So she's able to like save the boy. And he was one of the kids that left the Smarty Pants gang. He should have stayed there. He would have learned how to read and all that fun stuff with Grandpa Roz. Anyway, so he is fine. We decide to send him out to the lighthouse area that Roz has a source at because there's another Canassi there. So, you know, teach him the value of hard work and get him away from the city and dangerous people. And then Val and Rainier go chasing after the older guy who's terrible, but they're, you know, they're tracking him. They have to get back Rainier's stuff because that's the only stuff that got stolen was like Rainier's bag, which has all his money in it. And they do actually end up tracking him down. He was hiding in a crate of potatoes and he is just panicked because he thinks that we killed this other kid. He doesn't know that we saved the kid. And he's like, please don't kill me. Okay, fine. And we bring him to jail. So hopefully that is the end of him. His name's Ralph. Uh, but I was like, listen, like maybe we can use him to advantage somewhere, like drop him off in a different country and be like, listen, we're not going to take responsibility for you, but whatever you do in there, you get to keep money and we'll also pay you a salary. So, you know, maybe we'll break him out of jail later to screw with our enemies. So by this point, the Smarty Pants gang who Roz had reached out to earlier have found this dwarf that is selling all these potions. And turns out he's staying at the Claridge, which is like a really fancy hotel in the city. Roz is like, hey, I need to go research this other potion that I have because he has a different dwarven potion that he had purchased up north. And while he does that, everybody else goes to the Claridge. Roz doesn't know that this is happening. So Rainier decides to start playing his bagpipe because he's terrible at it. Brindis is enjoying it. Val is there. And meanwhile, Jan has figured out what room this dwarf is staying in has gone and put on a disguise and has gone upstairs, said, you know, what's his face has sent me up here. I have to get his book for him. And the, the valet's like, oh sure, go ahead. So he goes in, cracks the safe, gets the book out and the potion recipe and just pieces out with it. Shows up at the warehouse that Roz is at. Is like, here you go, here's the book. So even though Roz didn't do the stealing, Roz is gonna be <laughs> accused of doing the stealing and also has the book. So Roz is like, okay, I need to leave my warehouse because the Smarty Pants kids are here and I don't want them to get involved in this. But also, why, Jan? So Roz, you know, illusions the book to look like, I think it was like a basket of bread and then goes up to the castle. But still, I think the best course of action for Roz is to get this book out of the city and get it to his source. And like, while this is going on, Rainier is playing his bagpipe so terribly to the point that he gets asked to leave. And then he doesn't leave. He, he like pays off the owner 
and then just keeps playing. And so the city guards show up and they start to drag him out and Brindis is like, no, that's my friend and like punches the guards and then there's like this whole thing there's a ton of guards and finally someone is like you do know that's the queen right and they're like oh oh sorry so that's fine but Rainier still got kicked outside and I think the queen left shortly after because it's no fun if your friends aren't there. So after everyone has their fun everybody makes their way back to the castle again and there is a late raven that has arrived from Vardigan who is in Viborg which is the capital of the bandit kingdom just to the west of us. Last session we found out that some troops had been sent east, so which could have been towards us or could have been to the Lady Sarcola in the north. And now we find out that two more units of Irregulars are also being sent to join up with that group. And we know for sure, or like 99% sure, that they are heading north to the Lady of the Woods. We need to do something. This is kind of partially our fault for trading with her that she is in the sticky situation. Fortunately, Lady Thor of Spinnick is here and Spinnick is on the other side of the Bandit Kingdom and we have an alliance with them that says if you're attacked we'll come to your aid and if we're attacked you'll come to our aid. And we all kind of like the Lady in the North so even though she's not really part of our alliance, we're talking like, hey, maybe it's time we need to save her and we need to deal with Fulger once and for all. When Lady Thor shows up, she says that King Ruthgar is willing to send troops equal to whatever we send to this cause. So if we send six units of troops, he will send six units of troops. He might not be able to match exactly what we send, like if we send six groups of archers, he might not have six groups of archers, but he is willing to meet us unit for unit. So that's kind of a super awesome thing. Roz also, as the like international affairs minister or foreign affairs minister, whatever, decides to send a letter to the queen in Hogenmark because we had just met her recently to say, listen, we are about to go to war. We would super appreciate your help if you're willing to offer it. We did kind of save your country from all those orogs. So if you could send some troops down to the north to uh, the Sarkhol province to help the lady there, then we can focus our efforts elsewhere a little bit stronger. Because we're not just gonna go save this lady, we are going to just take the country, because it's about time. It's, we're done. We are done with this. And then Rainier's dad shows up and goes, listen, it's part of my bounty. I'll give you some troops. And Brindis is like, do I really have to marry this guy just to get more troops? And Rainier's like, dad, stop it. And so finally, the chief, his dad, goes, okay, I will put forth these troops anyways to say that we are here for you, you'll be such a great match, and you know, it's great if, you know, you decide to marry my son, oink oink. So, get a, we got quite a few troops all told. Like I said, we do need to split between Sarkol and Iver, so we do a lot of plotting and figuring out what's going on here. Lady Thora knows what they have to offer, and they actually have some navy support to offer, which is great. So we take two of their naval units and we bring them out to block exit from Iver because sure, we can seize the capital, but if he can just get on a boat and peace out, then that doesn't really solve the problem. So we decide that we are going to send up to Sarkol a group of house carls and some archers. Svinik will meet that with another group of archers and another group of house carls. So that is four troop units going up there, which is pretty much what we think is going up there anyways right now. And plus, if the Queen and Vikinger decides to send troops down, all the better. Down to Iver, we are sending scouts, knights, cavalry, and the nomads, which came from Rainier's father. And to match us, Svinik is sending the two naval units, so they got two boats, some scouts, and some archers. And the reason that we sent the scouts down there was in case that goes fast and then it goes terribly up north, the scouts can cross through the swamp a lot faster than really anybody else. We then take a brief moment to talk about how we're gonna divide everything once we kind of destroy the country. It's like, do we want to set up this country by itself? Do we want to take the property? And basically, we've just decided Whatever happens at the end, it will be a fair and equitable division of all the resources and the land. Because if you just split it in half, we end up with only swamp. So if we take only swamp, then we need a little bit of that money. But, you know, we're like, we'll figure it out afterwards, but it will be fair. But now that we've got all that sorted with, other than actually declaring war, Stormholtzen's tournament grounds have opened or they're opening the next day, and we're going there. So after a nice sleep, we head down to the tournament grounds. The queen has a royal box there, because I think it was like part of the initial deal. 
and it holds two people. So Brindis and Roz go together, they're getting to be pretty good friends. Rainier decides to compete in the jousting, and Val's like, you know what, that wouldn't be so bad either. And so Val gives up her seat in Storm Holtzen's box to Yan, which as we know, they don't get along very well. And Yan decides to wear Storm Holtzen's clothes that he had stolen from him forever ago, just as like salt in the wounds. And then Yan steals Storm Holtzen's wallet, but Storm Holtzen also steals Yan's wallet, so they just like come away and they're like, haha, I got the other person's wallet. Ah, oh, my wallet's gone too. Yan. But yeah, so we spend basically one last day of fun and not hecticness before we're getting into war. But that is the end of that session. If you want to find out what happens when we go to war, you will have to stick around for the next one. So make sure you do subscribe so you know when it comes out and also like this just because, you know, thumbs up are fun. And with that, I'm going to say thanks for watching and I will see you next time. <laughs>